Okay. Um, that's, at least that's how we do it at the board, but I'm, I, is that correct? Yeah, since we had originally planned for you to chair until Jim can't, was able to make it, since he's here now, then we would, um, I don't know whether we started, or since we haven't started, I don't know whether you need to, but we can, it's formality, just to keep everything clean. Okay, so I'd like to call to order the roll call, and before I do that, I would like to, uh, I'm not sure if I can pass it beforehand, I believe I can, I'd like to pass the gavel to um, <clears throat> the, what, Mr. Jim Delfer, uh, Seat B. Okay. Mr. Vice Chair. Mr. Delker in seat B here, accepting the gavel. And we'll call the uh, the meeting to order. So to, we'd like to start with a roll call. Um, Ms. Vodla? Present. Mr. Delker, President. Ms. Dutille? Here. Ms. Hawker? Yes, I'm here. Ms. Via? And uh, Mr. Bacon and Mr. Bacon are not here. Yep. Okay. So, um, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Sure, I'll make the motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Can I get a second, please? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Um, with no objections, the agenda is approved. Um, We'll go take a look at the minutes now um, from the February 3rd meeting, 2022. Um, can um, anybody have, uh, I guess, can I get a motion to approve the meetings from February 3rd, 2022? Sure, I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of February 3rd, 2022. Can I get a second, please? Second. Thank you. Any objections to the approval of the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. So we will move on to the scheduled public comments and presentations. Um, I believe we have uh, Mr. Kashai in the room uh, from the Sadatna Rotary Fish, or from Sadatna Rotary to discuss the fish sculpture. So uh, Mr. Kashai, please approach. Thank, uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And also I have another member of Sadatna Rotary Club, Professor Choi from the college. Um, last fall we came before you folks and asked about, you know, getting a preliminary sense of um, whether our proposed uh, salmon sculpture for the park, or kind of a giant mobile, would be appropriate or not. Since that time, there's, there were definite expressions of interest, and accordingly, we've moved forward. Um, tentatively, we have $5,000 in seed money from Hill Corp and the expectation of additional funds. And uh, Professor Choi has brought, and I'll defer to him in a moment, a uh, model uh, you know, generally speaking, of the anticipated sculpture, be kind of cool, I think, because we're looking at something which is representational but still has a neat abstract quality, kind of like a Brancusi sculpture or something like that. Um, I have spoken to Soldatna Rotarian Mike Turian, and you all know him as a civil engineer. Mike is prepared to go and uh, do the, the design for the support and the foundation. Our anticipation at this point is an approximately 16-foot-long sculpture out of um, aircraft aluminum, which would be roughly 10, 12 feet above the ground and on a single pylon, which in turn would not significantly disturb the surface of the 50-foot-long mound behind the Veterans Memorial because it would rest upon a, a set of, pi of pilings that was basically driven below the ground surface without really disturbing the... Um, the top of it at all. So we would have the support basically under the ground, under the turf, uh, supporting a single pylon. Uh, Mr. Turiano was going to do the design on that in conjunction with Kenai Rotarian Steve Tran, who's a mechanical engineer, and he would be looking at the mechanical engineering part. Again, the idea remains having a rotating sculpture. If, to the extent feasible, it can be done so that it's a season vein where the blueback salmon are facing upstream where we have the summer southwest wind, prevailing wind, and in the winter when we get, it swings around, we get the northeast prevailing wind down, you know, coming down, we would anticipate then a, a red and green salmon to the extent that we can do it within the um, bounds of um, fabrication and all that. Um, at this point, we're thinking 
that what it would be done is since it would be aircraft aluminum, we would go and scour and use aircraft aluminum paint, which will last many decades. I know my plane was painted in 1972, and it's still, you could still tell it's yellow and white, which is probably a good start. Um, actually, some paint I put on 40 years ago, some red Krylon bonded to the aluminum, and it's, you can still tell it has red chevrons on it. Um, I put that there in case I went, uh, went down. You know, we want to make sure if you go down in Alaska in the wintertime, they can find an airplane that's predominantly white, um, hence the red chevrons on top and bottom of the wing. Um, so that's the general anticipation. Uh, it would be resting on a single pylon. We're not sure if it will be an angled pylon, more likely a straight one. The mechanical engineer tells us that would really reduce a lot of any kind of torque or whatever on it. You know, we would be using a very extremely high grade bearing uh, to provide the swinging mobile aspect. Uh, for the basic fabrication of a 16 foot long piece, including a steel pylon support, although we would probably want to go with stainless, most likely. We have a um, bid from Scott Hammond of Magic Metal in Kenai uh, to do it for $16,000. Um, you know, obviously they'll be subject to some design amounts, but then of course you have to put it, you have to paint the thing or at least color it in some way. You want, you have to go and deal with the foundation. We're anticipating approximately roughly $30,000, not counting any in kind. And so of course we really want to get a stronger sense of the, um, commissions, uh, whether the commission is in support of this or not, before we go out and try to raise another ten, twelve thousand dollars and then look for a Rasmussen grant or something similar to do it along those lines. And so is it, so those are the practical operational aspects. Are does anybody have any questions? Um, I was trying to remember from previous conversations about how far off the ground is this my only concern. We're looking at ten to twelve feet. Yeah, okay. So that'd pretty much take it out of the realm of hopefully like vandalism and things uh -huh. like that. That's the biggest and, thing that I I'd hate to have put something up that nice and that ornate yep. and then have it only be messed with their monkey. Right. And, and On the bright side of things, um, the other thing Soldatna Rotary Clubs put in there seven, eight years ago, some of the uh, murals done by Professor Choi's students on the restroom building walls and that art park we put up in 2015, we've had zero problems with it. And I was just down there a while ago to change out. We, we have some Jim Evenson print images in there right now. We thought... You know, the salmon and all the commercial fishing stuff would play well with our tourists and that kind of thing. In addition to being some of the nicer art we have done in the community over the years. So we've had zero problems. I mean, that was a concern, but the worst we ever had was somebody sticking some, you know, promotional fundraiser things on the glass. And I was able to clean that off with just some goo gone. Okay. That's, that's all we've ever had was just somebody not using good sense. Do any of the other members uh, have any questions of Mr. Cashier? Yes, I do. Um, first of all, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Cashier and Mr. Cam Choi. Thank you for your amazing artwork. Um, and to me, I think you know, my first question is, where is the location? We're looking at that 50 foot by 45 foot mound, uh, raised mound near the entrance by the Veterans Memorial. Uh, this would be high enough. The mount is quite large, and this is only going to be at most one-third of the width or the length of the mound. Uh, and it would be high enough that it would not obscure the Veterans Memorial in any way. So that, that's the anticipation right now, is that 48-foot by 50-foot mound where the veterans, you know, south of the Veterans Memorial toward the park a bit. Okay, so... I'm not 10 feet tall, and I'm not 12 feet tall yet, but I know that there's a lot of kids and families that sit on that mound all the time. And that's and why we were putting up so high. So high. So, I mean, and I don't know the answer to this question, but would perhaps a 12-foot high be more desirable? And would the, um, let me see, the single a single excuse me, yeah, the ply-on angle, not, not, not a severe right. angle, would that be sufficient enough to not have kids try to climb up on anything or do anything to be cool? I think that would, I think that would work. At 12 feet, um, 
for, I'd say you'd need a ladder to get up there. Uh, and a big one, except that since it would rotate, the ladder's not going to have any support anyway, generally. But on a single pylon, most likely vertical, although the model has an angled pylon, with a 12-foot, you know, and these, these are practical matters. We're certainly very amenable to working with to make sure it's as workable and as desired as possible. I think with the 12-foot high pylon, I don't see anybody being able to get up there on a single pylon that's vertical in particular. We're thinking that the vertical one anyway makes the most sense structurally and mechanically um, in any event. Um, so I, I don't see that the kids are going to be able to get up there at all, to be honest. And I suppose we could try Thank to find some much. sort of I suppose we could try to find some sort of steel or other support that would um, have a Teflon coating or something like that, so you could so that graffiti wouldn't stick, and it'd be harder to try to shimmy up it anyway. I'm no, not, I'm not being sarcastic. Either. No, I know what you mean, yeah. and, and that's what I'm saying. Maybe there may be some sort of Teflon, <clears throat> right. Teflon coated support, but certainly we're very happy to work with the city and make sure that this is a really workable thing for everybody. Yeah. With, um, well, thank you for that, and I I appreciate that, and I think if I may follow up, Mr. Belcher. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I think the, the higher one I like, but I don't know enough about the construction. And I hear feedback, so I hope it's only on my end. Um, uh, and then um, I, I do like, I mean, Mr. Choi's sculptures are amazing. The one above the hospital, to me, is amazing. So, And you said most of the money will come from donations and hopefully Rasmussen Foundation? That's the intent at this time. You know, I can't say never. Um, I would never say never, so to speak, to quote the old James Bond movie title, but I don't anticipate asking either Soldotton or Rotary Club or the city for support at this point or for funds. I mean, I don't, I don't anticipate that. Uh, we're going to try to go and deal with it from private contributions. You know, we'll see what happens, but our, the plan at this point is to just try to solicit funds uh, privately at this time rather than either the city or Rotary. You know, if, if we come up a couple thousand dollars or a few th several thousand short, I may ask Rotary uh, directly and city directly for a little bit of help to get to the very top. But I don't anticipate that at this point. It's, it's not part of the plan. Okay, thank you. And then my final question is maintenance. If once it's made, if, if this goes through and, and it is um, put up, the maintenance on us or is the maintenance, and this is a question maybe you, I don't know if you answer that, but who, who maintains it once it's there? Well, the, 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 maintain? the idea is for it to be, not require maintenance, hence stainless steel support, uh, stainless steel support maybe with Teflon on it, and uh, aluminum as a practical matter doesn't require support, doesn't require anything for a long time. The only, talking to... Uh, Mr. Tran, the mechanical engineer, the only thing that might have to get done is the big bearing that's going to go on it may require some um, may require some oiling or greasing at some time or another, but that's about it. And I would anticipate the city would do that as part of its park maintenance. Um, Professor Choi might be able to describe that a little bit more because a relatively similarly sized salmon at the hospital, as you mentioned, is on a bearing and actually... Mr. Tran remarked on the excellent condition it was still in uh, years after it was put up. Basically, um, it looks brand new, and, it, and the mechanically, it's acting brand new. Uh, Professor Choi might be able to comment uh, further since he put that in himself. Well, thank you for that, and, and it wouldn't whip around fast if we had really high winds. I'm sorry, ma'am? It wouldn't move around fast. We had really high winds. We discussed that with Mr. Tran, the engineer, and I understand the concern. Um, that's something we're going to have to try to deal with on the mechanical engineering side. We are aware of the concern there. Um, I can't say any more than that because it's outside of my knowledge at this time. But we that issue came up when we were discussing the um, discussing the initial installation at the hospital with Mr. Tran and Professor Choi. And so we are aware of the concern. Mr. Tran, who was a 
manufacturing mechanical engineer in California before he moved up here with his wife. Uh, the discussion was that maybe we could find some way to dampen it so that it wouldn't shake too much. Like, If any of you who are pilots know about tail flutter in an airplane, that's really bad mechanically. We don't like that. So we would try to find some way to dampen it. There may be, and I'm just speculating now, there may be a kind of bearing, for example, that swings freely, but above a certain um, oh, a rate of turn might become self-dampening. I don't know what's available. We're aware of the issue, and we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you very much, because to me, that's a major issue. I like everything about this. That's a concern. Maybe in my background was always working with kids, and I know kids are shorter, but that would be a concern. That would be probably one of the main concerns for me. Thank you very much, and I appreciate this. This is a wonderful project, um, but I do have some questions. Thank you, ma'am. Well, we're aware, we're aware of, this, of the exact same concerns you've mentioned, and, you know, we're going to, you know, do what we can to mitigate those completely, you know, to the extent that that's feasible. I think that the bigger concern would be to find a way to mechanically dampen in very high winds. Um, but that may not be that big of an issue because it's basically going to be a thin sheet of aircraft aluminum with some projecting ribs. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any other questions before um, we uh, excuse Mr. Cashy and, and have Professor Choi? You had, you had mentioned um, going from blue back to green and red. Would that be through lighting or just re iridescent reflection? Or no, prism? it would probably be by right. painting. You know, oh, okay. Old fashioned, quick and dirty. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's fine. We'll use different color. We'll use different color aluminum uh, aircraft paint on either oh, okay. side. Yeah, oh, okay. we had thought about powder coating it, right. but given the fabrication that uh, Mr. Hammond was discussing, um, there may not they be a big enough oven to powder coat it. Right. So we may have to use aircraft paint, but aircraft paint works pretty well. It lasts a long time. Right. Okay. So the, the present location noted is where we do the Christmas tree. Um, okay. If that, if we can't fit both of them on there, I think we may be able to fit both of them on there. Would the possibility of the mound that's closest to the river be an option, do you think? Or? It, it depends on what, okay. what, what you want to do. Okay. I kind of like the idea of keeping it as open as possible, right. and this would tend to avoid uh, complicating the sight line as much at, at the point. I, I think it's important to keep that park pretty open. That's one reason for, aside from safety, putting it up quite high. And secondly, I could say to do it. Uh, by the way, I, forgot, I should almost mention it would probably. I noticed that the trees along the river are starting to get kind of tall, and you know the little the little asp and all that are starting to block the view of the river. Speaking of sight lines, I'll just mention that I know summer maintenance hasn't started yet, but I find it starting to be hard to see the river after a point. But we we are we do want to go and uh, maintain the sight line. At least that's the thought at this point. We do our maintenance every year. While we yeah, I know. I know. I, I just happened to be down there the other day They're walking the dog. Growing. It's funny. We spent all that money to, to put them there, and then when they grow, like, oh, now they're in the way. <laughs> well, it's not nearly what happens with the state. Yeah. And, and their scenic pullovers. Yeah. <laughs> we know about those. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any further questions for Mr. Cashai? Mr. I have a quick, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at that and and it works better closer to the river, like Mr. Carmichael mentioned, would that be an option? I, I, yeah, I, I, it, it's up, ultimately it will be up to the board's prerogative working with uh, Mr. Kashai and, and Cam um, as far as where, we, where, where it ultimately goes. So maybe that we could schedule a period, maybe a little work session for the next meeting where we actually maybe convene on site before heading over here and so everybody can we're looking at exactly what we're talking that's prob about that's probably doable yeah. I, I would make one comment though along the lines of a prior question if you put it in the mound by the veterans memorial it's going to be more protected from strong wind by the trees there and that's going to reduce the mechanical stress with a lot of winds whipping back and forth on the you know the winds come whistling up the river and you put it back those several hundred feet in near the trees, you're probably going to reduce the loading on it. 
Um, anyway, if, if you decide to be down there, just let me know and keep me advised. I'm just wait. I didn't want to. No, that's be right. Anybody else have any other questions before we have Professor Choi come to the uh, present presenter's table? So I use your model for um, the proposed sculpture, and um, this little um, uh, black silhouette there is uh, just uh, to give a, a sense of scale. For uh, how tall a, uh, a six foot tall person might be, so so we're anticipating that that this post is going to be a little bit higher. And you notice that uh, with the post, um, Joe is speaking about having it either vertical or slightly off vertical. Uh, the 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 difference between the angle that's at and a true vertical it isn't all that much. And so you know, if somebody were to, were to decide to to try to scale up or, or climb up the post would still be pretty pretty difficult to do. Mm. Um, and so with the, the rotating form, you can see that the, uh, the pivot point is uh, right around where, where the gills would be. And so the, the, the tail would, would end up uh, picking up whatever current um, or, or direction um, uh, 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 that that the wind is blowing in and would remain in that in that uh, position until um, until the uh, uh, the current changes. So unless there's some kind of some kind of force that drives this in a um, you know, in a circular fashion, um, you know that, that high high speed uh, 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 motion is, is really not going to be an issue. No idea what it was going to look like. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Right, and, and, and so the last time we were here, we brought some drawings for the for the committee to uh, uh, to see, and some of the changes that we're thinking about to, to make this a little bit more structural. Uh, this 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 little uh, extension here is, is probably going to going to be uh, brought out uh, uh, towards the tail to give these uh, uh, these uh, rods here. Something to uh, to attach to on both ends, and that make it uh, a lot stronger. Yeah, I think that's pretty I like impressive. The, I like the inference yeah. about it. It's nice. Yeah. Do you have Miss Via and Miss Hawk's number? I just sent you a picture of it, so that I sent yep. one to Penny, but I don't happen to have Miss Via's or Miss Hawk's, so at least that way they can I, see. I I love it. I actually I have a question. And I have closed the picture now so I can talk and not okay. still hear feedback. But it, the, the, the bones down the side will... I didn't hear the explanation on those. Oh, um, so right now uh, the, the ribs uh, are free-floating. So they're connected uh, at the... Um, um, Along the main spine, which which runs along the uh, the crest of the form, and as they uh, they they uh, approach their ends, they're, they're just floating out in space, and so the idea is to extend uh, part of the spine or or add a secondary spine that would be below the form, that would mimic what's happening with the upper spine, and that in turn would, would give give a uh, uh, a point that these uh, that these bars or these rods could terminate and uh, tie into. Well, Cam, I, I mean, Mr. Choi, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's definitely impressive whether you were able to time in or not. If structurally it's, you know, necessary to do so, but I mean, as far as artistically, just, I mean, even having the bottom open is pretty appealing. And I think either way you did it, it would still provided a, a beautiful visual effect. Yeah, so. and, and I think the, uh, the main issue is, is just keeping this, this uh, um, volume in the center relatively open. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's part, part of the, uh, the visual effect. So as the, the form uh, turns and spins in space, 
you see the uh, the ribs from both sides, and they end up giving that you know the effect of uh, ripples on the surface of the water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and then the uh, the final um, one that you're planning or you're thinking of doing one side green and red like this one is, and then the other side would be more of a silver and blue like type. Is that, is that what I was understanding? Uh, yeah. uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That would be a, a neat effect. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I was just looking. The mechanical engineer did suggest that we may want to go and move the support uh, pivot a little bit closer to the center just to be where, uh, for, um, just to reduce the amount of the arm and all, so and all that on there. Yeah, yep. So if we look at sports, it, yeah, yeah, put it somewhere. There. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. The center it reduce a little bit of the tension. I, I yeah. that makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. Yep. So, excellent. So for those of you who are out there and uh, not able to see, but basically, it would just move it further back on that lower gill plate towards the center of the fish, just to right. give it a little bit better center of gravity, is what they were trying to explain, and just makes more sense structurally and puts less stress and tension on the on the fish and so on the sculpture. So does anybody have any uh, questions of the professor um, about the structure or about the fish itself? Or? I would actually no, I'd like to say something. Okay. Is that Connie? I'm sorry. Yes, it is. This yep. is Connie. Yep. Go ahead, Connie. Um, first of all, this, this is the first time that I'm, I'm seeing this and it's very impressive. I think it, it certainly will add a lot to that amazing park anyway. Um, my question, is there any type of lighting at all um, for this sculpture? At this point, it doesn't appear Mr. Kashai is shaking his head, so I'm assuming that means there isn't any planned at this point. So, yep, no electricity or no lighting. No, nothing that we can see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very far. So I, I was, the one thing I was going to emphasize, all aspects of this will be professionally engineered mechanical side as well as the foundation and the civil engineering structural engineering side of it so I mean you know we, we will be doing full engineering well clear, clearly it was well thought out and uh, it will add a lot to the community thank you okay. Mr. Delka yes ma'am Ms. Valo go ahead yes Yes, I'd just like to say, Mr. Choi and, and Mr. Kashai, uh, especially Mr. Choi, thank you very much. The fluidity of this piece, and I think the way the light will hit it, regardless of the direction, or maybe the time of the day, even in the winter time when the moon's out, I think will be very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for the thoroughness, Mr. Kashai. Quite welcome. Okay. So, any other questions? So, at this point, we don't need to make any movements on it, but we just need to probably do a planning session of some sort um, for the future so yep. that we can do a site uh, examination. Yep. So, we'll we definitely. I would say that uh, you know the feedback so far seems pretty positive, and everybody looks like we're we're definitely interested in and in, uh, in pursuing this at, uh, in one way, shape, or form. And, and it looks like a beautiful piece of work. So, uh, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. if I mind, uh, understanding that we're going to have a probably a site visit at some time, which I think is appropriate. There may be a time when I may need to request, just for fundraising purposes, a letter from the city expressing interest and support, although not committing the city at mm -hmm. this time, but basically an expression of interest. And I'm not saying I need that right away, but mm -hmm. when I start going to try to raise money uh, from other places, yeah. it's they're going to require that. No, yeah, understood. So, okay, yeah. thank you. Yep, on, based on the conversation, I don't know that that's going to be a difficult ask. So, okay. I'll even write it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it really easy. It's great speaking for Penny. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you she's go, looking guys. for the mute button for you. That's right. <laughs> Penny's, Penny wants to put me on mute now. So. <laughs> you guys, I'm not there and listen to what you're doing. No. <laughs> I miss all of you. Okay. Well, if um, any further questions for either of the two uh, testifiers here today or me? So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate both of you coming in. It is a beautiful much. piece of work, and, and I appreciate your efforts.
Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you. Okay. So it looks like we're moving on to action items now. So um, we'll turn it over to Andrew for recommending changes to the Soldotna Parks and Recreation fee schedule. It's been a while since we did any um, increases, some as far as small pieces where we inserted um, some new fees, but we haven't really addressed some of the older fees um, in ongoing except for related to rounding up or um, sales tax issues and some of those things making things cleaner. Since we've since the COVID stuff started, we've shifted over to credit card fee or credit card purchases only, which um, does have an expense, but at the same token, it doesn't necessarily um, put us in the category of even numbers or anything else. Even that's where we're at, but we haven't addressed the, the camping site fees over the over for at least six years, and we haven't addressed the um, ice rate or haven't adjusted the ice rate at the sports center for. Geez, I'm thinking that's probably 15, 16 years um, just because of the economy and everything else and trying to maintain the affordability. But at certain times, you, the costs still have to go up eventually one way or the other. Um, so what we're proposing is um, an increase in the camping fees and the boat launch fees for the for Centennial and Swiftwater. Um, it's not going to amount to a gigantic financial windfall or anything else, but we are very busy. And the costs of everything we do have gone up, even within the parks. The cost for fertilizer has over doubled from last year. And we're looking at increased costs for everything from sanitation to gravel to, to trash removal to dumpster pump or um, outhouse pumping, everything. So we're going to try to stay ahead of the curve a little bit on that, but at the same token, not price it to where it's too prohibitory. Um, so what we're... What we're proposing here is um, to take the present non-prime rate um, camping fee from $21 a night to $23 per night for regular camping, and then increase from $26 to $29 for the peak, which is starts on um, July 7th and runs through um, August 5th in that range in terms of those things. So uh, as far as the parks and as far as comparative ones, Shelby, um, um, I asked Shelby and she reached out and did some research and I did some research and we came in at the, at the, the state campgrounds are at $20, but they're, the, and they're the cheapest. Whereas, um, city of Kenai, um, for the dip netters and everything, and that was 45 to 55 per night. And, um, and camping is 25 per night. It's kind of an interesting system, but um, Homer's um, at about 30, Seward's at 40. Um, so at the 26, the, moving the 26 to 29 and 21 to 23, we're comfortable that we're still not um, being exorbitant in terms of how much we cost. The boat launch is another one we're proposing to raise from 18 to 20, which is the stand, it seems to be the standard on the Kenai, which is $20 um, per um, launch or $25 at some launches, depending upon where you launch. So going from 18 to 20 wouldn't be a huge chunk at, in, in terms of those. And frankly, we just dumped uh, about $10,000 into the dredging of the boat launch. So of that type of thing that periodically those are almost a, it's a pretty good expense to be able to continue to do those type of things ends up to be about a nine percent increase all the way across in terms of these and we'll, we would also adjust then the um, nine dollars per drift boat launch or retrieval from nine dollars to ten dollars which would put the overall fee at 20 if we were doing both ends um, the state i don't believe has that option but we do in terms of um since the drift boaters and or the rafters um, put in and take out and have to pay twice. Um, it's kind of the nature of the beasts. Drift boaters don't have to pay for gas, but they do have to pay for double launches and those type of things. So um, it's in terms of those things, but we're not um, looking at that. We'd hope that these aren't um, these increases aren't too, too off-putting. The second rate increase that we're um, looking for is um, actually I should pause here and ask if any of the board members have any questions on the, the campground portion of the of the fee increases. Hearing none. Mr. Oh. Mr. Delker. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Go ahead, Penny. Like to, Yeah, I I appreciate the 
the increases and the fact that they're not really high right now and that and I really appreciate that we've kept them at a minimum. Um, I think that's important. I think looking forward as we progress, I think we should look at the costs and the revenue and see how that works out. But thank you for doing this work and not increasing them by so much, but just doing a little bit of an increase to make up for things that maybe we haven't made money on or broken even. So thank you. I appreciate that. We do pretty well in the campgrounds. Um, overall, our operations are obviously parks and rec are subsidized through the general fund, so um, it's not a directly a direct enterprise fund as far as you must make this profit or keep at this level, but rather mm -hmm. the community's quality of life and community services um, in terms of that, um, that this council has always put at, at really high. So try to be in the market at least, at least reasonable so that um, we're not subsidizing everything in the world we do if we don't necessarily have to. And, Frankly, when we have the revenue from the campgrounds, you know, 90% and 98% of that's from outside the area, so it helps with the sales tax dollars and stuff like that, but also gives us, if we're reasonable, gives them more reasons to stay here than perhaps maybe staying someplace else. If I might um, interrupt real quick and just uh, make a note of uh, Ms. Villa is, uh, is joined us this evening. To just not to, not to embarrass her, but just to get it on the record that she is here and present. So. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Carmichael. Sorry. That's, that's stealing my thunder because I'm usually the one that embarrasses him. <laughs> I knew I'd get to you eventually. <clears throat> um, the next one would and be Andrew, the Sports Center you. ice rate. Thank you, Andrew. Before you go on, okay. thank you because I think your comment about quality of life and experience, it should always be foremost in what we do, and I appreciate that. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, next one is the ice rates and... I looked back through my records and I didn't want to spend four days and five hours trying to figure out when we did it, but it's been at least 15 years since we increased the ice rates. Um, you can see in the memo some of the comparatively speaking things. Uh, we are at 210. Um, the O'Malley, which is a private rink in Anchorage, is a 415 as far as a snapshot there. As far as Peninsula goes, Homer is at $330 an hour. Whereas Ben Bokey, the governmental owned rink and operated in um, Anchorage, is 350. I would note um, the Homer rink is actually run by the Homer Hockey Association, a nonprofit group. Um, in terms of that, um, obviously we're the, we're the government, and then O'Malley is private, so some of those things. So we're at 210, which is a little bit less than everybody else. Um, but at the same token, years ago. When, um, when, they original, when I was originally interviewed for the position to, to manage the sports center, the, the idea of costs and such came up as far as what the sports center needed and stuff like that. And, and the conversation ultimately ended, or didn't end, but went to the point where you could raise those rates to where on paper you would predict to pay for your operating costs. But the reality is, is if you go that high in a certain market, you're likely to then shield out and cleave out anybody at the economic lower economic levels to where you not only subsidize the building, but you also accommodate only two-thirds of your market. So if you price yourself out of the market, so many people can't participate at that cost level that then you still end up with a subsidy but are accommodating fewer. So the principle has always been try not to get too far out behind the eight ball on the prices, but at the same token, it, it can't be free. Or, no, or Life isn't free, but I mean, it's the council's decision and the board's decision so to, to decide whether it's free or not. Obviously, so Lotton Creek Park pulling in there is free, but the, we don't have any refrigeration systems and, and those type of um, systems for that. So now, a number of years later, we're talking about um, raising, trying to work a little bit forward on some of the ice rates and take it um, and increase it say five percent and whether or not the board wants to um, do this at, at a planned intervals I, whether it's five percent now and then a planned interval next year or the year after or or something like that is something that we can discuss in the future but as of right now we are proposing to go from um, from 210 up to the up to 220 uh, which is ten dollars an hour. I, I would have that. to say that just 
on first glance, if this is a, a one every five years or one every number of years increase, that I don't think it's probably enough. But if okay. it's something that's scheduled as a stage or a, a slowly incremental um, increase, and not that any of us like expenses to go up every year, but I just look at, you know, 5% isn't even covering the cost of, you know, of inflation where we're at right now. I think that those amounts I would like to see as more if it's something we're not going to move for another three or four years. But if it's something that we would um, consider moving again and again just based on what the other other rink rates are around the state, I just think that we're, we're more than reasonable and have the, I think we have enough room to move up a little bit higher than that and still try to cover some of the cost um, that it costs to you know, provide that and then all the expansion and some of the things that, you, that we've done as far as the, the rebuilding and, and remodeling and stuff is done with it. I mean, I think that the, the users, the primary users, should have some, some stake in that too. So. And such, you know, and I brought that forward. It wasn't in the memo, but that if um, when we get to the point whether with the board supports or or recommends this to the council, <coughs> that could be put in the motion as far as if the depend upon how the board feels with a, a more increase planned or planned increase, whether it's just like Jim said. So we can handle that either way. And but brought it forth at 210, we're the lowest in the state. We may be still low. I think we're still lower than Fairbanks, which is borough subsidized. But um, everywhere else, we're, um, or Fairbanks might be a little bit lower than us or similar, but everybody else is, is, is pretty much is way higher. So, and that goes through. But the, uh, so there were some other rates, like our paid gate rate is not referenced here, but at the same token, we, we are actually similar to where the, the paid gate rate is at the Eagle, at the Eagle River Fire Lake um, ice rink and some of those ones. So in terms of that, and that's predominantly when we get into the high school side of things. Um, it's different. We don't necessarily employ this particular rate when we negotiate and work with the um, Brown Bears contract because it's a little different. This model, it's not just an hour by hour deal. So, but for the most part, we're um, we're low, and then everybody else. And um, you know, if we for plan to progression, but right now we're recommending departmentally we're recommending five percent. If the board feels differently, um, then um, that's 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 what it is too. So. That's where we're at on this. I'm not going to beleaguer too much. We have a lot of different rates on here. Joel and I were talking about one we didn't have today. And I said, do you want one? Now's the time to insert that rate in there. And he said, I don't think we want to go there right now. So it's not that uh, we, we've actually discussed and looked over these and, and we're comfortable with where we are for just about everything except for the, one, the items noted here where we, um, where we uh, where we've noted where we think we're a little bit low. On that note, and I'm going to shut may up. I, may I ask a quick, quick, yeah, quick one? On the bottom of that page, I don't know where the page is. I just looked there. It's number six in my book. But um, it, you go from, for the non-prime, from 150 to 15750 and not it wasn't an, a $10, $10 increase, and, and that's fine. Whatever you chose, but is that, that's also plus tax when applicable, isn't it? Correct. Okay, and so that would round that one out to one sixty six ninety five total. Yeah, we're talking pre tax dollars here. Okay, okay, all right, good enough. Thank you, thank you for doing the work on this. And I think you're right. I think at some point, maybe incrementally, but not so much that we we price people out. So now it's a matter of whether the vote, what, what the board thinks and if there's a motion out there so, and we can work with um, and go from there. Okay. Yeah, I guess what we could do is just make a motion to pass the schedule and then we could still discuss it. We could still open up to, for discussion after that. So yes. can I just get a motion for the uh, to accept the changes um, that have been presented by uh, Parks and Recre Recreation fee schedule? Sure, I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll make a motion. Oh. One. Okay. Is that Penny? No, I think if there's somebody present, that's fine. Have them do it. Okay. Ms. Detail, would you like to make a motion? Sure. I'll make the motion to, to increase the fees as proposed here, um, and then we can have our discussion. Okay. Can I hear a second? I'll second. second. Okay. We have two seconds. Okay. So I'll open it up for discussion now. Um, does anybody have any comments um, based on uh, Director Carmichael's uh, Presentation. Is that in the public or is that us? That would be us. There is no public here other than Joel. Okay. There is no public. Okay. 
Well, Joel's pretty important. He is important. No. But he didn't look up when I said that, public. so I assumed it was a no. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing Candy Crush. So I would have I to like say that I'm, I'm in favor of accepting it as proposed. The only thing that I would think that we should look as a, a committee, and whether that's tonight, um, we don't have to make that decision, but I would think that looking at like a 4% a year annual incremental uh, increase would be more than reasonable to try to keep up with minimal uh, average inflation, not including present inflation, um, trying to keep up with that over time. So I don't think that going up, you know, picking a, a number, a 3 or a 4% increase just to making it incremental that way it won't seem it won't be as as harmful to the people the user groups and it will will be slowly incrementally moving up and if it comes to a point where it seems like we're overpriced or out we can always you know we can always amend that down the road the future future um, committee members can can do that so but um, so that would be my take on it does anybody else have any other comments I agree I think um, I have a quick comp well, go on Okay, I agree. These prices are pretty reasonable. I mean, it's ten dollars more an hour with tax. It's not even a whole lot. So I think incrementally raising it is a good idea. Okay, if there's, I'd like to make a comment. I would like to look at it and not pick a number now and actually have it be on an upcoming meeting day. I, I think we're meeting in July instead of August, if I read it correctly. Um, and Andrew can clear me up on that one. But I would like to look at it and look at the impact. Um, yes, it's not very expensive. We're coming out of a two-year pandemic. I'd like to look at it really carefully and increase, maybe not always 4%, maybe decide that each year. And that way we wouldn't put ourselves in a box. Any other discussion on the present motion then? Um, or any changes or suggested changes to what was presented? Ms. Hawker? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I was just curious if you had any. Just, since you're not here, it's always tough when we can't make eye contact. I feel like we're excluding you, so I just wanted to make sure you didn't have any questions or comments. No, I'm just, you know, and, and this, it, and I do, um, I appreciate everybody's work on this. It's not easy when you're trying to at least at minimum inflation proof these services that we offer. Um, as we look at ours, they review theirs also. So we're way behind the eight ball to start with, which we feel comfortable in that position um, as far as keeping the fees definitely user friendly. Um, however, like I say, if we lock it into a certain amount per year, then we kind of, uh, as there's increase, we're not making the, the headway that we intended, I think. But maybe we could review this on an annual basis. Okay. Any other comments? Ms. Beal? I do like the idea of not, um, of being able to review it every year and making sure it's something that we do as far as an increase goes. Okay. Okay. And we do do a, a yearly review it's re, as part of the um, code, so we can absolutely uh, moving forward, and that's something that, that normally comes before the board if we have if we have changes um, and move forward. So, so. Okay. All right. If there's no further discussion, then uh, I'd like to call for a vote um, on the motion. Uh, Ms. Vadla? As it gets a motion to recommending to change the Soldatna Parks and Recreation fee schedule to those as presented by Director Carmichael. Um, Ms. Vadla? Yes. Mr. Delker, yes. Ms. Dutile? Yes. Ms. Hawker? Yes. Ms. Villa? Yes. Okay. With that, looks like the motion passes. So now we'll go on to reports. The Parks and Recreation Director. Who's that? Um, we uh, this is what I'm going to cover is we at the last meeting we had we talked about board size we talked about board residency we talked about board and the frequency and everything else um, once we got out of the meeting we um, went I met with the city manager as well as um, you know and then it ultimately went to the council in terms of what we would um, what changes um, that would work um, the board had 
um, was on board, obviously, to um, increase the numbers to every two months, which will help, especially with this, um, like Joe's fish project and, and some of the other things to be able to look at in real time and, and be a little more effective. You know, government's always notoriously slow, except for Sylvain has always been pretty streamlined and got things done. So um, that'll help going along that way. In terms of the board size, the original recommendation was to go, or the original board um, request was to go to six, from five to six. Um, with the even number, it was related from the, both the attorney and, and our experience to the clerk's office that the that the six even number without a vote, without a tiebreaker, was not too um, conducive to um, avoiding mm -hmm. any stalemates. So our, the administration's recommendation was to take that to seven. So even though it's a bigger board, but nonetheless, we don't have to worry about a tie or something like that. In the meeting, one, at one point, somebody asked if, if we had a tie, who would break it? And, and I, I didn't want any part of that. And if Joel was my successor, I don't think he wants any part of that. When we, when we bring stuff to you, it's to blame you guys, not us. No. Um, <laughs> so we don't want any part of it. No, we do. We're, we're happy in our decisions in terms of that stuff, other than it's just appropriate from the community board standpoint to have that decision made from the advisory board rather than an issue from the administration being the deciding factor. So. Um, in terms of those things, the residency came up as far as whether or not um, you know they would be close in the city, in the city, just outside the city, um, or and such like that. And through the vetting process, and I think um, um, Breck even spoke with the mayor a little bit about this. I may be mistaken there, but you know, and we were confident in that um, as far as establishing that would kind of lock us in a little bit. But at the same token, we're confident that the mayor mayoral appointment process would vet. Say if somebody from Seward wanted to be on our advisor board, or somebody in East Pass, or who knows, not to point those people out, but um, that that would be vetted at the mayor level and still be still be conducive with um, the interests of the community in terms of how we do. So those positions are being advertised and they're out and about. So we're moving forward. Um, the next, um, we'll I'll look at the calendar here in a minute, unless Breck already printed it for us as far as the next meeting. Um, I don't think we have that yet, but we will figure that one out by the time. But we do are working on that every two months for a while, or as needed. If we if we find we don't have a, uh, any any items for that, we can um, we can cancel a meeting. But it's easy, and it's easier to cancel a meeting than it is to get one slated that's out of circuit, and have uh, public notice and stuff be insured. So uh, we're good forward. We did get those changes made at the code level, so we're dealing with a little bit different world. Um, as far as operationally going, we have the sports show going this weekend. They're set, they started setting up today. They'll set up full tilt tomorrow, and then that goes tomorrow and, and Saturday and Sunday. It, go, it opens up to the general public tomorrow night with hot dogs and other stuff, and then Saturday, Sunday are the general hours. So we're getting all that set up. It's a little bit different. Our sport rec show and the home show, a little bit different world this year in that the company that used to provide the pipe and drape for the home show um, is no longer in the state. Um, so they, all the pipe and drape we've purchased through not only the um, CARES funding, but also the general fund money <coughs> we're renting out. And um, so the, what was a $6,000 revenue source for the city when they used row and decorating is now about a about $11,000 income. So that equipment we purchased is, is, uh, is making us money back, which is a good deal, and also allows some, um, we can really work with people and, and at that pipe and drape is a, is, a, is a hot commodity. We just got some back actually that we purchased with the CARES money that um, was used at the vaccination clinic for vac COVID vaccination. So, and we use some of our barricades as well. So um, in terms of those things, uh, we're moving forward and um, making some money. Um, Sport and Rec shows this weekend again. And then after that, we're getting ready to turn the building over to the contractor for the remodel. But not bit, but that's not all because uh, on Andrew went ahead and booked the MMA fights on the 14th, and we turned it over on the, to the contractors on the 15th. <laughs> Joel got wind of that, and he gave me the look, not quite as not quite as sternly as my wife's look when she gives me that look. But he was like, "Really, you did that?" I was like, "Yes, I did." And uh, but nonetheless, the fights haven't happened for a few, a couple of years. And um, Matt Plant, who promotes those, has been working in other realms and other venues and doing promotions and everything else. And I uh, believe it or not, 
Tom Arnold is a, there's a big show, comedian show being promoted in Anchorage with Tom Arnold as the main liner and Matt Plant from here in Soldotna will be the opening act. So um, in addition to his promotions, he's doing that. But we have the fights on the 14th and then on the 15th, we turn it over to the contractor. We'll be moved into the conference rooms and temporarily in there and we'll finally get rid of that popcorn ceiling. That's their first aisle of item they're going to get rid of for us is that ugly ceiling over the mezzanine that I've hated since the day I walked in that building. And if, if people talk about leaving monuments or whatever behind, and my legacy will be that I finally got rid of that ceiling um, in terms of that stuff. But we're moving forward with that, so we're kind of moving. The offices are getting stripped down um, in terms of that stuff. I guess a little bit too little, too late maybe, but Annette and Denise, this is Shelby Halderson. She's our ad administrative assistant over there, and she is a rock star. It's funny, she's from Minnesota, and her husband is a Zamboni driver in Nikitsky, and her daughter is a teacher out at Cape Beach, and she's a Zamboni driver as well. So it was destiny that Shelby came to work for us, and she's next in the family, so she can talk smack with her daughter, she said at the table. You missed a spot. I don't. But so, Shelby, welcome aboard, Shelby. She's so far saving, saving Joel from killing me, and... Um, and helping us out a lot. So if Shelby answers the phone, that's who that is. And she's she's brought up a lot of years of experience. And, and um, you know, there was questions. She's run events. Um, um, what you ran the um, bowling tournaments as well as Relay for Life back in Minnesota. And we had a conversation about an event promoter, whether or not you're there the whole time. And she just looked at me and laughed and said, well, uh, it's a 16, 20-hour day, period. So she gets our business. So she, it was, it was, she was a, di a diamond we found in the pile in the terms. So we're happy to have her. And, and she hasn't run out screaming through the skating competition, which was the largest ever in the state with 175 skaters over the course of three days. It's finished. It did on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then, um, and then some actually started on Thursday and, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and was done. Not on Sunday, but that was Easter Sunday, and we still had 175 skaters register. So, and so that was a couple weeks after Shelby came on board, and she didn't leave us. So there's hope, because that's a crazy time. So we're looking for that. Uh, uh, out and about, and in the paper, is the Beetle Kill Tree projects that are out. Uh, we, um, the city, was able to move forward. We had been waiting on some grant monies that. Frankly, we're never going to come in time to be able to open the campground safely without trees falling and that type of thing. But um, between um, Stephanie's work, John Zarneski's, Joel's, mine, uh, Kyle, and CO, and the, especially the council fast-tracking it, we are under contract, and the contractors are working right now in Centennial as well as Swiftwater. They should be done mid-next week. In Swiftwater, it looks like contract in Centennial has until the 19th of May to affect those and get those trees out of there. After the contractor finishes up at Swiftwater, then the same contractor has um, was awarded the, the um, mitigation funds for Parker Park, uh, the Dog Park, Memorial Park. Uh, what am I forgetting, Joel? Dog Park, Memorial Park. West and West Readout. There's some work down in there that happens. So uh, that, and that's and that's going pretty good. We'll end up um, closing some of those parks possibly for a couple few days while the contractor goes in. But the pricing was really good, and um, in terms of those things, because we're working with that even all the way till next Thursday and Friday. I walked in the public works director Kyle's office, and he asked me, and as he was pale, asked me about the community cleanup. Now we have like 13 or 14 schools worth of kids are going to be all over, including in Swiftwater and Centennial part of the time. But um, that's something that's planned year-round, and they're actually, the coordinators for that are having more schools call them every day wanting, to, wanting a spot to clean. So we're going to take a half day, uh, two half days next week, and send staff to work with the students so they can work around the contractors, get the riverbank cleaned up, and in terms of that stuff. And then after that, in, in and amongst that, we'll be putting the stairs back in and um, starting in some of those directions. We... Um, open them up, and then uh, we're getting people hired. we got just about everybody hired or offered positions as of right now for the summer. We had some really good candidates this year. We didn't have a lot of candidates um, compared to some other years, but we did have some really good ones, so we had some really hard decisions, and those are always nice when you 
flipping a coin and then still not trusting the coin or your stomach and go back and forth. That tells you you got some good candidates out there. And Joel and I have been doing this for a long time. And when it's this difficult, um, you know, it's, it's a nice, nice challenge. We um, actually also have in, in the process, which is a little bit out of signal, we normally have our normal summer laborers, student laborers, um, campground attendants, gardeners, flower people, and those folks. But this this year, we have spring, we actually ended up with one of our maintenance direct, um, employees, workers that um, was hired by streets and to run the graders and everything else. So Cole Bartels went over there from us, so we had to fill his position. and kind of reached on a candidate today, so we're happy to be moving forward. Hopefully that'll work out with them in terms of those. So so that's where we're at, just kind of getting everything ready for the summer. Um, it's calm before the storm a little bit, but sports shows our last hurrah, and then the fights will be our second to last hurrah, and hopefully I won't do any more before then. But we're working. If you can, if you noticed in Soldatna Creek Park, we talked you know, at the meeting about not scheduling any events and such in that um, pavilion area until after Memorial Day. So we went ahead and put up the, the barricades around that. And so far, people are really working with us very well on that, just to try to get that grass a little bit of time to to, to take off. And so far, people, uh, you know, I have a couple people called and asked and said, you know, and we just had to um, decline their, their request, and they've understood it. So they haven't been challenged with understanding that that grass needs all the help they can get um, on that. In terms of that stuff, so when Annette and, and when Annette and Penny start doing their hippie stomp dance to the to the bands on Wednesday night, it tears up the turf. So um, <gasps> we go from there. Annette, Annette and Peyton. I don't know. Well, the first opener is the week after the Wednesday after Memorial Day. Yeah, so, June yeah. awesome. so we're heading there. So and the and the chamber presented to the city council at the last meeting. And as of right now, they have two options to continuing with the Levitt AMP grant. One is as if all they have to do is say we want it for the next three years and they're awarded $30,000. Um, or they can say we want it but with less restrictions and then they can get awarded $15,000 a year um, and for the next three years without even having to do the voting or anything else since we're established and have such a good, well, so Dotton has such a great track record with the turnouts and the, and the way that music has changed the community um, and made us made that park such a focal and a destination event place between the market during the day and the music. I mean, that's if you're on vacation, there's not a better day than there's not too many days better than Wednesdays in Soldat in the summertime in terms of being able to enjoy a good time. It's very cost effective and, and very welcoming. So that's exciting coming up moving forward. So we'll also be moving forward um, working with the Bears on a new contract for next year. They're playing out and doing those type of things. And I think I'll hand it off to Joel to see if I forgot anything. I forget anything, Joel? So working forward and having fun. The crew's ready to get outside. So thank you all for all your help on all this stuff. And I'm done. Or I'm quiet. My dogs. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we'll, we'll move on next to the board chair report. So I will... Uh, Pass the gavel back to Miss Penny for uh, if she has anything to add. I didn't prepare anything for this evening. Okay, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I did have a question real quickly for um, Andrew. Andrew, I know that they said um, mem board members, the two additional members we're looking for could be non-residents, city residents. And is that just into the whole peninsula, or are we holding it? I, I don't think it needs to be just sold out. But are we holding it for? Like we're not a member, of, for example, of Homer Park and Rec, and I don't think we're a member of Seward Park and Rec because they're pretty far away. My question is: Is that the whole peninsula, or do we have parameters? I, I don't think we should have parameters just so that uh, and a little bit of nine, a little bit of this. But are there parameters at all? Uh, the the as as forwarded to the council, the board was increased by two members up to one of which of those additional seats can be filled by a non-resident of the city of Soldatna. We already have one allowance, which is the seat that Ms. Villa sits in, Ms. Villa sits in. And then so there will be at the prerogative of the mayor whether or not we end up with two people from outside or one. And um, at that stuff, as far as parameters and those, that, that particular 
um, aspect of it was would be default, de defaulted by by inaction or it, not referencing it to the mayor, the seated mayor, to determine who would be um, viable candidates with relation to where they live or qualifications in general. I can, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I have a few things, but I need to reach out to Shelby first. I want you to know when I mowed my lawn in Clam Gulch, I was very creative and I know how to do roundies and in and outs and make paths for people. And if you meet a Zamboni driver, I'm so in, it's incredible, okay? Just telling you, Shelby. <laughs> that sounds good, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I'm very clever with it too, and I have wanted to be a Zamboni rider, driver, I mean, I mean, excuse me, um, entrepreneur my whole life. Okay, let's get serious. Um, I attended the Soldatna City Council on April 27th, and it was an excellent meeting, and I'm really happy that the council is voted earlier to continue the Zoom webinar. Um, I will, Andrew already gave a shout out to Shannon Davis, executive director who gave an incredible update on the Levitt Amp, so I won't do that. Um, and he also gave an update on the Spruce Park release, just taking all my thunder. And he mentioned the next meeting is July 7th. So what I'd really like to say today is I would like to welcome our newest member, Ms. Tucker, I have, I mean, I believe I know you, I think I do, but my mind is a little <laughs> weary right now. Um, Thank and you. I, I appreciate you stepping forward, and it's nice to have more members. I really love that. And I want to thank Andrew and Breck and everybody else and Joel and everybody who's done lots of work. So that is my report. Thank you. City manager is not in attendance. So, a uh, public, did you want to talk? No? Yes? Are you public or Joel? What's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I have one more thing. Oh my God, I forgot this. Um, upcoming is our park and rec um, all meeting and I would love it if Joel would tell us the date for those. I'm probably putting them on the top of the day for a long time. Or Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Todd, um, could you give us that? And I would love to encourage the rest of the board, the advisory board, to attend that. One of the best things I've done in a long time, and I have put my other paper in a, in a different location. So Joel's going to have to update you. Sorry. Just yeah. Uh, no, I can give you an update. Um, so quick history for the newer members of the parks um, board. We, our department is part of the Alaska Recreation and Parks Association. It's just an overarching uh, group that supports each other. We're a big state with little departments. And so we kind of team together and share our brain powers. Um, we do a, a yearly conference. Um, we hosted it last year in Soldotna and we will host it again this year in October. Um, the dates are October 12th and 13th are the two main conference days. Um, but then there's another day I'm going to throw out to you here in a second. Basically, this conference is an opportunity for uh, people like me and Andrew um, to, from all over the state. So we'll have people from Southeast Alaska come, Fairbanks comes down, Anchorage, Seward, Nikiski, Comer. Um, we get together and it's a, it's a networking opportunity, but it's also a learning opportunity. Um, and so we'll bring in speakers uh, from not just around the state, but um, we'll bring in some speakers from out of state um, that can share the latest and greatest uh, Parks and Rec things. Um, this year, uh, we're adding a all-day training on the 11th. This is we just actually met with um, Carl, uh, who is Extra Plays rep. This is the playground equipment. Um, I believe we have a few pieces of his company stuff in our in Farnsworth, I think. Um, anyways, he's coming down. It, they do like an all-day inclusive playground design workshop um, where they will, will bring together, obviously, hopefully, board members, our board, um, but recreation people from around the state. And then I'm going to hand invite, and we are going to invite 
um, people from the school district, from some of our local nonprofits, uh, from our hospital community. And, and uh, with these facilitators, we'll actually learn about what inclusive playgrounds look like and why they're beneficial to the whole community. Uh, we'll do a site visit to Soldotna Creek Park. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll actually have uh, full maps of the park to play around with and design our own inclusive playground um, on the footprint of Soldotna Creeks. Because in two or three years, we will, um, it's on the capital uh, budget to hopefully replace the playground at Soldotna Creek. So this will be a, a first step process where we'll actually kind of get a, a two year head start on the planning of what we, what we want to see in that playground facility. So it's going to be an amazing opportunity. So I really want to make sure that the 11th is on your guys' calendar. So it'll be an eight hour day, but uh, we're bringing down a lot of uh, professionals from Anchorage and then out of state um, to do that. And then the 12th and 13th will be uh, your more traditional conference days. And I will get all of that information out to you guys soon. So that's kind of my update. I just wanted to get it on the calendar. Um, I know it's midweek. I know for um, those that are busy working, um, you know, it could be tricky. I really, really think that 11th is going to be a, a huge experience for us. So please try to find a way to join us on that. And if you have any questions, I can answer them or. If I could add no, on to part of that comment. process. Oh, part of that process includes even landscape architects attending and, and those type of things. So it's a a coming a cornucopia of professionals in the realm from lower 48 and here as well as to actually get reach out as a community involvement pre way ahead to find out where what the way that what the community would like to see that park look like as the equipment in there nears its end of life um, in terms of maintainability and, and such like that it's been a plant I've uh, been on the on our radar for a while um, but it's kind of almost like an extension of the original process where the community was community driven, community input from physical therapists, occupational therapists, um, senior, um, maybe the senior, you know, the senior contingency representatives because of the fitness aspect and some of those uh, those things and, and what what the community wants it to look like, not just what are the professionals or or administration or anything like that was, but what the community looks like, and that's when you get the real success. That's an exciting deal. I thought I heard somebody else. But I would like to sort of piggyback off of what Joe, uh, Mr. Todd said and Mr. Carmichael said. Uh, I went to a school board conference so a month and a half ago. It was a national one, and I was so impressed with the inclusive playground designs and what they were capable of to do for students with disabilities and adults who had our strength training that they needed. There's so much out there that brings a child or a family to a playground and, and encourages them to do those manipulative things, both bodily and mentally, that is so good for kids. And I think after the last few years, that, I mean, added to that, it's a brilliant concept. So I, that's exciting for me because I like slide down the slide, you know. Thank you. Okay. Does that conclude the chair report, Ms. Badala, or you still have any other topics? No, that's the only thing. I just wanted to include that because, and, and yep. I and have Mr. Todd speak on it. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Next to be the city manager's report, which we're going to try to get yeah, that one. Skip so skip it. And then public comments. Mr. Todd, would you like to add anything else? Yeah, I'll take okay. He's still fine. He's going to be quiet. Okay. And uh, so now we'll go to the uh, council members. I, I'll just start on my left and go with Ms. Dutil, see if she has any comments this evening. <laughs> Yeah, um, probably the only comment. I was just curious how it's going at Centennial with the wood cutting. Is it beginning to look kind of bare? I, 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 have you been I down been there? I've been in there for a couple of days. Okay. I did. I went down before we started and flew the drone and got some pictures. Oh. And it's going to, I don't want to. 
I just I don't want to pull my head out of the sand. I mean, I it is what it is. I don't think we're going to be alone. I think there's a yeah. lot of parks. Need it's going to look like the Russian River that you can see from the road when you're yeah. going through Cooper Landing, probably. I mean, we have a thousand. Hopefully, the way it, the bids came in and everything, we we'll probably be removing up to almost a thousand trees out of Centennial. You got to remember, there's 120 acres there, but there's another another four or five thousand that are stuck back in the boonies that we won't. The progression is initially when the beetles get in there, obviously they kill the trees the first couple of years because the fire danger is through the roof. And that's how we got the grant that the federals didn't release for us to deal with the fire, but uh, in enough time to deal with the fires. But now we're talking uh, what's called wind throw. I mean, the wind, you notice, everybody in here has noticed that the last, every windstorm, there's, you can watch the neighborhood trees fall over. Uh, whereas three years ago, a tree would fall here and there. And, um, but now, we, I mean, during one of the windstorms, my wife and I sat in our front room and watched probably 10 trees across the street go down in people's yards and such like that. So that's the danger we're dealing with now. So we're focused on those efforts. And we have some trees, that pretty good-sized trees, that fell right in where a camper would be during the summer months. So those are, um, those are the ones to deal with when we're running into those. So it's just going to be this – it's still going to be beautiful. Now, we put a lot of restrictions on the um, – we hamstrung the contractors as far as how they could get rid of it so they couldn't come in with a, a skid steer and just drag trees all over or something like that. And we did put restriction, you shall do it this way. And um, you're responsible for fixing everything that goes through. So for, for the most part, um, that's um, the, the companies we're working with. They have the equipment that should be able to do it without the least damage where it doesn't look like So they are actually removing trees and yes. brush. <coughs> Make them go away. So, yeah. We will hold 50 cords for ourselves to sell in the campground. And then we will shut down. We have the processor that we got that we'll be trying to. So. Okay. Um, any comments from Ms. Villa? Sorry, I'm late. That was late. No <laughs> worries. No worries. I'm used to the one pulling out spots, so <laughs> don't feel bad. I was okay. early tonight for the first time in history. I think I entered just about had a heart attack. <laughs> you saw me walk in at 510. I'm always happy when I'm not the latest one. <laughs> and I'm very excited. I just want to say I'm very excited for the Windsor Market. Thank you. It's shaping up really good. I'm really excited. Okay. Okay. Ms. Hawker, do you have any comments uh, for the board or general? Yes, um, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, allowing me to be a part of this. I've lived in the city of Sazatna for 39 years, and I feel like it's a really good opportunity to give back and be part of what I love so much. Um, as far as Joel, I have a jury duty during the month of October, but I truly believe that the whole aspect of the Extra play uh, in the park is a huge and would have a huge impact on the community. I have a lot of senior tenants that I know would try to uh, participate if they could. A lot of them are too embarrassed to go to or can't afford some of the local workout places. Um, and as far as um, I wanted to talk about the beetle kill real quick. A couple things. Does anybody know if the limbs and branches, I'm not talking about the, the stump or the tree because the wood can be repurposed, but can the limbs and, and branches be uh, chipped? If I mean, we, we looked at that and it was an option. In fact, when it, we hadn't looked at it, and then somebody mentioned it, and we, our, all of our ears perked up. And then we, in talking with the contractors, what happens is then um, it's not a, the, the, the current, unless you have a specific size chipper and such like that, the chips come out very small, and then you end up with ant problems. Um, and then the ants get into them, and they get tired of the chips, and then they go eat the trees that did survive the beetles. So we opted to go against that. Um, even like when we have the wood chips in Farnsworth and Soldotna Creek Park, those come out of specific chippers. When I asked one of the contractors when I was trying to research the prices, I said, what, are, what, is, it, what, what is the option of chipping instead of chipping the branch instead of hauling them out? 
do. She, and she said, um, we have a chipper we will sell you if you want. That's how interested we are in trying to make money chipping them for cost recovery. <laughs> so she was willing, they were willing to sell us a seven inch chipper and we already have one that I refuse to have the staff use just because the chippers are not pretty. They're dangerous items. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, as far as a replant project, I mean, is, is anything in the works for any of the parks at this point? We have a yearly deal with um, Kenai River Ro Rotary that um, they bring four to 600 saplings forward. In, uh, in terms of that, we're hoping we can get a hold of those. We're working with Mitch Michaud as area forester, and he's with the Arboristic Society who provides the trees and sells all those, and they're having trouble getting them. So in addition, you can't, you can't get a Chevy with a certain chip from China, and you can't get trees like you want either. So there's pretty much a um, shortage of everything right now. The trees mostly because everybody's in the same boat, so across the bay they're just hard to get a hold of. But we do have that moving forward and going to work forward. We also have a plan to pull the number of trees out of Centennial and some other areas that are planted and growing too close to each other so that we can transplant them and, and move them around rather than having 100 trees and only 10 of them survive out of a pod. Hopefully, maybe we can get 25 or 30 of those 100 just by moving them. So it'll be a combination of effort with um, not only our own budgetary issues but the um, nonprofit support groups, service groups, as well as um, um, the, even the Kenai, caring for the Kenai helped last year, and they... they purchased a bunch of uh, saplings. And so we're moving forward on that. It's just a matter of what we put in where. And um, we planted, I think, 400 last year in Centennial. The year before that, we planted about 400 in Swiftwater. So uh, it's moving forward right now. We're just focused on uh, our efforts and focuses getting them out of there so they don't fall on people, and then we'll get after it as far as replanting some of the trees and figure out what goes where. Thank you. Okay. Miss um, Vodla, do you have any comments this evening? Yeah, just real quick ones. I'd like to thank Mr. Joe Cashai and Tam Choi again for bringing Soldatna Rotary Fish Sculpture Project to us. I'd like to thank um, Mr. Joel Todd for the information about the upcoming parks. I mean, that's not actually Parks and Rec, it's the Alaska Rec and Park. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Andrew Carmichael for providing all this information and don't forget our next meeting is July 7th and I'm, I'm happy about the meetings that we're increasing them to six and I'm happy about the membership that we're increasing it potentially to seven um, so thank you for that and that's all I have okay. have a good week okay and with that I think that yeah um, just piling on to the the, the Beetle kill comments. I mean, we, we only had five acres near the clinic, and I think we lost around 80 trees. So I mean, 125 acres, I can't imagine what the number of trees to come down. And we didn't even, we only did the half the lot. We didn't even, we just did the stuff around our structures. It's just crazy. And we have more coming down that are going to have to come down, you know, in the next month or two. So it's it's a huge, huge issue and, and a huge problem, and, and it's going to need to be addressed to make the park safe. So appreciate them taking care of that. And um I'm totally looking forward to the summer uh, music in the park, the Wednesday market. I think that uh, I can, everybody's anticipation, I think everybody's kind of on the same page that we're, we're all pretty excited about all the activities and all the fun mm -hmm. things that are happening. And um, just hope we have a really nice, warm summer with a lot of warm Wednesdays. <laughs> Lots of Mr. Dry Delker, Wednesdays. may I do a quick, can I do a quick follow-up? Um, I don't know. We're I think he already hit the mute button. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't care. Thank you for filling in for me. He does a superb job, and thank you for stepping up. I, I appreciate it. Or you always step up, so I appreciate you. Okay, thank you. That's probably the last time you're going to miss a meeting, though, isn't it? You learned your lesson? Probably. <laughs> I don't like to miss meetings. I hate being online. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, with no further comments, then could it be okay if I call for adjournment? All right. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate all of your support and input. Thank you.